Hey, good morning, people. Welcome to the Morning Manna podcast. I'm Pastor Greg coming to you from Lighthouse Church in Twin Falls, Idaho on a windy spring day. And we are going through the Psalms together. And Psalm 25 is our uh, subject matter this morning. And it's a Psalm of David, as they all have been to this point. David, at this point, at least we think, uh, the occasion of this psalm being written is the occasion upon which David was leaving Jerusalem because of his son Absalom's uh, rebellion and the coup that he staged against his father. And so perhaps you recall the story Absalom uh, was uh, in the city when his dad was king and so on. And Absalom would be at the city gate and he would hear the people's complaints. He would um, address the people's problems and he would tell them, hey, listen, my dad doesn't have time for you, but I I really care for you and I'll get you taken care of. And he kind of uh, sort of seduced the people uh, to him and turned them against his dad. And then after a couple of years of that, he staged his coup. And David didn't put up a fight initially, but he left with several hundred of his men. And so this was a a time of profound sadness uh, for David and shame and embarrassment. And so to think of David, the man who had risen to the heights of political life, of uh, you know, uh, of warfare and soldier life, of uh, popular culture life. He was the guy. And, um, and to have his life come down to this, where his own son turns against him and turns the people against him. Uh, well, you can imagine the incredible blow that that would be emotionally. And so David writes about that in Psalm 25, and he begins in verse 1 and says, To you, O Lord, I will lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. So shame, let me not be ashamed. Shame is, is always attached to um, at least in part, a, a lack of hope. It's, 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 it's swimming in the failure or swimming in the thoughts of what people may be thinking about me now because this is being said about me. And, and so uh, hope is the expectation of coming good, that good is on the way. It's not always going to be like this moment that I'm in. And so when I, when I realize that, okay, though this, this moment, my present might be quite difficult and embarrassing even and so on. But if I have hope, I know that my present is not always going to be like this. In fact, good is on the way. We're going to get through this and we're going to get to a better day, a brighter day, a more joyful day. And so hope is crucial in the Christian life because you're going to find yourself in places where you are embarrassed and you are ashamed or you do fail in some way or another. And people want to, they'll want to write you off and they'll want to exult over you, as David says. And so hope will carry you through that time. Hope will get you through to the other side because the, the moment is not going to stay the same. You're going to get through. God will be faithful to you. He he absolutely will. And so to be able to bear up under that um, under that embarrassment and that shame, uh, hope is absolutely necessary. Well, then David goes on, and he says, uh, "Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame." Oh, that is so good. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Did you catch that? Those who wait on you. See, that's the thing in the Lord. We have hope is living. It's a living hope. Jesus Christ is our hope. And because hope is living, it's not a 
you know, it's not hope like the world version of hope where we hope something happens and it doesn't, you know. No, hope is sure because Jesus Christ is sure. And so those who wait on the Lord will not be ashamed. We ultimately will, won't be ashamed. And as a matter of fact, we'll be vindicated. We'll be glorified, as the Bible says. We're going to be shown to be God's people. And to all those who doubted us or exulted over us in any given moment of time in life or whatever, we'll see that, whoa, this person really knew God and knows God. And so those who wait on the Lord, they will not be put to shame. Those who desire and who pursue to do treacherously, treacherously to people, they will be put to shame, ultimately and finally. Well, make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. So, David, because of the difficulty, he finds himself in a, in a super teachable place, a place of hunger. And have you, haven't you found it to be true, Christian, that man, when, when things are going off the rails in life a little bit, like, Lord, teach me. Like your presence with me in this hard time is, is that is what gets me through. And I want to hear your voice here, Lord. Because it, it, it gives me perspective and it makes, it gives me the strength to be able to bear up under this load that I'm carrying. Well, verse 6, remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. So David's not saying that, you know, he's been a choir boy all his life and he hasn't sinned. He's, he's casting himself upon the mercy of God. He realizes that, that he needs mercy uh, and God's grace in order to cleanse him from his sins. And so he's saying, oh, don't, don't remember my sins, Lord. And do you know, uh, Christian, or even if you're not a Christian, that the Lord won't remember your sins, when your faith is in Christ because of the cross. God absolutely will forget your sins. He'll remove them as far as the east is from the west. And that is the, the, the joyful expectation of the believer when we pass from the, this life to the next. We won't stand before a great white throne judgment and be judged for our sins because Jesus was judged at the cross already in our place. And so... We have joyful expectation of joy in the presence of God and being presented spotless and blameless before his throne. So David cries out in that way, verse 8, Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the uh, humble in what is right, and he teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. I love that. As David was traveling away from Jerusalem with his men in, in shame, uh, there, was a, there was a guy that was off at a distance and he was cursing at David and and just kind of trash talking David. He hated David because Shimei, the guy's name was, he was a part of Saul's house. Saul was the previous king. And Shimei hated David. And Shimei attributed all of his um, misfortune in life and all of his suffering in life to David, that David, you know, took the throne from King Saul. But as you probably know, David was the rightful king of Israel. But nevertheless, Shimei hated David for it. And so he cursed him and he was throwing rocks at him and so on. And David's men said, David, let, let us go just kill the guy. And David said, no, perhaps the Lord has sent him 
Perhaps there's truth in what he says. And so David, in that moment of humility, he, he could easily have said, yeah, go just take that dude out. He's bugging me. Instead, in humility, he says, you know what? I think I might be able to learn something in this moment. Even though this person is accusing me of things that I haven't done, even though this person is saying things about me that aren't true, this is a teachable moment for me. And I don't want to, in my pride, miss it. I don't want to, in my, you know, bluster and so on, miss the treasure that's in this moment in my life. So, Lord, teach me your ways right now, even through the harsh words of this critic in my life. Lord, teach me your ways. You teach the humble. And so, Lord, I'm, I'm putting myself in this humble posture. I'm laying myself bare before you. God, teach me. Well, we'll continue uh, in Psalm 25 next time. Thanks for joining me.